And here's another little project that I'm working on. Um, a lot of you have seen our, we bought that Skidoo snowmobile for the kids, but you probably haven't seen, I have a 68 Larson that I used to ride quite a bit. Um, I bought it from a neighbor. It was kind of a fence roll find. He had bought it brand new, actually. Um, and then, well, I'll put the camera down here and talk while I'm taking this apart. But um, anyway, I picked it up. We used to do quite a bit of vintage riding uh, back. We had actually quite a few different vintage snowmobiles over the years. But um, now we've just, we had that Larson, and I haven't ridden it for quite a number of years. I just haven't had the time and haven't uh, had really the weather. It's The last few winters have been pretty warm, and that thing doesn't really like the warm weather and not much snow. So this winter's been a good winter, I figured, to get it going again. Have something to ride with the kids' ones. So I'm just going to take this as just a fuel filter. I'm going to take that off. But this carb uh, has always kind of given me trouble with the needle inside. Every year it seems to want to stick closed and it doesn't want to draw fuel out of the tank. So I usually wind up pulling it apart, freeing up the needle. But since this thing, I haven't had this running in probably five years. So I picked up a diaphragm kit for it. So I'm going to take that apart. We'll put the kit in it, clean it up a little bit and uh, see if we can get that beast running. It's uh, it's definitely not a pretty machine, but it's been actually a very reliable machine for a for a vintage sled that I pulled out of the weeds. It uh, one ride we went on with a bunch of other people. I think we put 71 miles on it one day, and didn't follow the plug or anything. So uh, that's not bad for a machine like that. <clears throat> but I mean the hood is kind of busted up, and it's like I said, it's it's nothing pretty, but it's it's a beast that's for sure. Just gonna pull this diaphragm apart here. This is a Tillotson HD carburetor, the bigger, bigger one. Um, I think the smaller one, if I'm not mistaken, was an SD, but I might be wrong there. That's what that Skidoo has on it, which I don't know. This this is just a single uh, single cylinder J Lo motor, 297, I believe it is. So it uh, definitely. Definitely got a, enough carburetor on it, I think. Pull this apart here. Keep track of this. Yeah, it's kind of nice. A implement dealer in town there, they, well, they sell new snow machines and stuff, but he does keep some kits for these in stock, so that's kind of nice. Hopefully we can try to get on some vintage rides. There was just one last weekend we missed out on that was it was one warm day there so i wanted to get corn ground so we didn't didn't get to that one but the vintage snow snowmobiles they'll definitely uh Definitely keep you busy. I did clean this. Sprayed this carb down. I didn't soak it, but uh, maybe I should have. But I sprayed it down and brushed all the loose, loose dust and dirt off of it. <coughs> Pull the first blade off actually looks pretty clean in there but I'll bet you that that needle is stuck then I just take this apart and just so I remember how everything went but the way they got the bolts they pretty much all have to go back in the same place they got pegs and then there's two bolt holes that are closer together so kind of help you keep track of everything but I've had this, put a kit in this when I uh, got this snowmobile, and I think that's the only time. I maybe put one in it once after that, but um, that was about it.
little stuck. Well, we'll get a bar. This one's long enough, maybe. There it goes. I don't want to get too crazy there. And there's our fuel pump diaphragm, which seems to really be stuck on there. And then this is what pushes the, um, what do you want to call it, I guess. Your needle is in here, and then it pushes on this. I don't know how well you can see in there. That needle is, yeah, there. Put it down where you can see. But you can see that needle up inside there. It's not, the needle should drop down when this opens, and it's stuck in there, so... That's uh, pretty common with this. And I try to run pretty much all the time. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but I try to keep uh, non-ethanol uh, gas in there because I'm sure that's a big part of why that seems to want to stick. But I need a smaller screwdriver. There's a spring in there too, so you want to hang on to that a little so that doesn't go flying. Now the kit I'm putting in just replaces this, these diaphragms. It's not a new needle and all that stuff, but um, I haven't. It's always done pretty well without it, so... Let's see if that needle will come out of there now. It's stuck bad, but... There we go. There it is. Tip looks good on it, just a little bit of crud in there, so. I took the jets out, I blew all the passages out, got that all cleaned up. Um, so now I'm going to put the needle assembly back together and make sure that's working. I didn't clean up the diaphragm plates yet, but I wanted to uh, get this far anyway and make sure that needle's not sticking, so we'll do that now. Making sure that little spring doesn't go flying away is can be a tricky part sometimes. And getting this little screw in here that holds that hinge down. All right, let's see if that's working. Well, it is working. I have to just hold it so it's basically straight up and down, and I can't get it to show that on camera. You can't see in there, so. But it is moving, so uh, I'm going to get the rest of these plates cleaned up, and we'll put the new gaskets in. All right, here's my new kit here, new diaphragm kit, all the different parts in there for the fuel pump. 
and then I got a new fuel filter as well that screws on the bottom. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead, clean all these plates up, and we'll put it back together. You want to make sure you get these lined up. There's a little, they got all kinds of little things to make sure you get them in the right way, but there's a little <clears throat> knob over here by this one hole that has to line up, and then the two pegs have to line up. So you don't block off a vacuum port or something. And you want to make sure you got all these surfaces in here good and clean so they seal good because <clears throat> and the same way with the filter going on the outside because if they get any air leaks in there it's going to give give trouble and you got to be careful because all these plates are all aluminum so you don't want to get too carried away and gouge the aluminum either fall in on those pins and then we'll put the screws back in hope they line up with everything just got to basically keep track of your plates go on the right way these are pretty self-explanatory if you pay attention I'm no expert I've just kind of done it by taking them apart and seeing what's in there but it worked when I got it back together the last few times I've had it apart so Tighten this down somewhat evenly. Put the new filter on there. I'm going to make sure that that o ring is good. I throw a little bit of two cycle oil on that ring too, just to help it to seal good so it doesn't bind up. I don't know if it's necessary, but that can be a real troublemaker if that doesn't seal good, gets air in there. Well, there we have it. Got that all in there. Um, now I'll go put it on the machine and see if it fires up. Two deer right out there, coming right for the farm. Well, here's my beast, 68 Larson. Um, I got the carb in it now. 
got the head gun through that. You've seen that. I got that bolted on. New fuel line. Uh, the boys wanted to get a screwdriver so I can tighten up the throttle, but I'm going to see if it'll draw some gas out of the tank anyhow. So, see if we got that far. Yet. At least it's turning over, Dad. Well, she's sparking. Hey, I didn't see. <laughs> Look in there, right at the bottom of the spark plug. See it? That little white thing? That little, little spark in there? Yeah. That's the spark. What? Let me get a little. What happens if you get it too tight? Well, if you get too tight, you'll break it off, I guess. You need to get kind of pretty tight. You want it tight though, so it seals. Yeah. That's what I would do, Dustin. If you only got got one turn, this should fire up. Ooh. All right, Justin, you want to plug that hole again? With my glove on? Or yeah, on? that should be fine. On. Just leave your glove on, yeah. Ready? Yep. It was alive. It was alive. Cover that hole again. Stand on the other side of so I don't hit you. I don't want you to pop you right in the face. Okay, Got go. it? Okay. And once it starts like that, let your finger out. Best thing for it, get it out and run it and get it opened up. Jessica was a baby, so what, probably eight? She used to call it the booboo beal. That's right. Yeah, Jordan, you've never seen this thing run, have you? Mm -mm. Does it work? That's it works. I still got it. That carb is still a little bit funky, but okay. keep it open, it's fine. But if you let off of it, it wants to die. But just need a little tinkering with it. At least it runs. Runs. Still I powers through the powder. That's the best thing. Is it as tippy as that ski -doo? No. Really? No, not at all. Whoa. wonder what the difference is between them. I don't know, but this thing is, is I mean, it's not obviously extremely stable, but it's way better than that ski -doo, as far as tippiness. I'll my gas can in. Really? 
And this is a, this here, the guy I got it from, he used to use it for ice fishing and he said he was going across the swamp and hit a stump and broke the <laughs> fiberglass. So that was my patch for it. I was gonna get it fixed, I probably still should, but I think they wanted like 300 bucks at the time to fix it. So I put the tin over it and I think I had the seat duct taped once, but that's worn off again. It looked really nice when you had it duct taped. Yeah. But yeah, then you left it sit out in the front yard for a year. <laughs> I was gonna plant I flowers ever, in it. Really the only time I ever sat on this thing was when I was pretending to drive it. Yeah, basically. I've always wanted to I see used to this thing running. Years. That carb has always given me a little bit of trouble like that. That's why it almost, the time that log truck was coming down the road, I was worried it was going to stop on me. <laughs> but no, it seems to be running pretty good. Yeah, don't break it off. It needs to have the seat redone. I should really take it apart and get it all redone. Now that we actually... When I got this thing, we were not very, <laughs> didn't have any extra money at all. <laughs> hey, Dad. I don't know if this, this is a stick. Oh, this kind is kind of the $400 milk check, $600 feed bill era. Yeah. Yep. I was working at O'Reilly's. So I paid 50 bucks. I gave Ray 50 bucks for it. Looks like and then I took it up to my cousin Adam and then his brother-in-law, Jake. They helped me get it running, went through the carb, and we had to put a secondary clutch in it because that was cracked. But Jake had a, I think this pretty much is a 67 Polaris because we took the clutch off of that and it was pretty much the same, the same kind of gas tank and everything as the Polaris's did. But got it running and rode it quite a bit then. We used to go on vintage rides every weekend all winter <laughs> at that time. Plus I rode it quite a bit around here. Hey, Dad, looks like there's a light in the back.